TP6 version 3.0 has been released, and with it, we've added quite a few new exciting features, and I'm going to quickly walk you through those in this video. I actually have just installed version 3.0 on this monitor, and the first thing you want to do before we even mess with features or try anything out is do a factory reset on the monitor. Uh, in the past, it hasn't been necessary to do a factory reset after a firmware update, but for 3.0, since it is adding so many new things, you do actually have to go into your system menu, scroll down to factory reset, and select it, and let it do the reset. You may want to write down any settings you have saved so you don't lose those, uh, because it will wipe it clean, uh, but it is necessary for it to work properly. So now that a factory reset, I can quickly show you some of the features that we've added. We've changed kind of the look and appearance of the menu. It looks the same, but the font's a little better. You know, minor stuff, cosmetic, makes it look nicer and just more refined. Um, in your tools menu, you'll have several new options. So if I go down to focus assist, you'll see not only do I have focus assist, but I have edge color off to the side there. If I turn on focus assist, you'll see I have color, plus, and max. So there's actually three focus assist options now. Uh, the thing we've been using in the past is plus, and that's still there and hasn't changed. Max is a much more intense version. You can see my edge peaking is much more noticeable with that. And the edge color one will actually make your image black and white, but it will give you a colored tint to your in-focus area. So you can see red right there, and you can actually select which color you prefer. Right there, I have blue. So you can see right there all the blue outlining. And there's several different colors. I won't go through them all, but yellow, cyan, magenta, green like so. So there's several different ones. If you want to actually use one of these colored edge peakings in one of your hotkeys at the top, you would go in, you'd select it, pick your color, and then press and hold one of your custom buttons and pull that up and scroll to focus in color and select it. And now I've set focus in color to this key and you'll see when I turn it on it gives me the green. If you don't do that first, it'll just default to red, because that's the first in the menu. Red is good, but if you do want a different color, you need to go select it first in the edge color menu, and then assign the smart key. So those are all the new focus assists. There's quite a few, and they're very handy. Uh, we've changed the name of false color to exposure assist, just to help you and any other customers, or anyone using your monitor, understand what that feature is for. Um, we've added 2x zoom, which gives you an even closer zoom than one-to-one -one mapping. The nice thing about this is in the past, one-to-one -one mapping obviously did not do anything on 480, and people would frequently request the ability to zoom a 480 image with a 5D Mark II or something along those lines. So now we have the 2x zoom feature that will zoom even if you're on 480, and you see it's jumping in here. So that's a really nice addition. We've also... Um, We've left the Canon and Nikon scale where they've always been in the preset menu, but we've also brought them out into your tools menu so you can access them in any preset. So you can scroll down to DSLR scale and quickly turn on or off your Canon or Nikon scale. This is mainly intended for Canon 5D Mark II, T2i, um, 60D, and the Nikon one is mainly meant for the D7000. So you wouldn't need these for the D800 or the Mark III or the D600 for that matter. Um, just some of the older Canon and Nikon cameras would need the DSLR scale option. Uh, we also have the 2x anamorphic option. This is if you're using a 2x anamorphic lens and want to de-squeeze the image. And you can just quickly turn that on. I've got that on right now. Obviously you wouldn't want to use it unless you're using a 2x anamorphic lens. It wouldn't look right if you weren't using the 2x anamorphic lens. You'll see that other than that, there's pretty much no changes other than uh, it's a little more responsive. Scroll wheel's a little bit more responsive. Um, we've renamed a couple things, moved them around to a more sensible place. Um, I guess the last thing I can think of is the display option, which is what you can use to show what format you're receiving. So right now I'm receiving 1080p. We've made that a little more robust. Um, you can actually change the amount of seconds it shows up. So you can make it so when you press display, it just turns it on and leaves it on, puts it on for two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. And kind of like the edge color, you'd want to set this before assigning this to a smart key. So if you wanted to set a smart key to always be on when you press the display, you'd go in here, you'd select on, and then you could hold your, uh, one of your 
little smart keys here, hotkeys, select display, and now it'll do what you set in that other menu. It'll just always turn it on when I press it. If you set it for two seconds, it would only come on for two seconds and then disappear. Um, so that's a minor thing. Not sure how often that'll be used, but it is it's good to know for sure. And that's pretty much all that's been added in 3.0. If you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks.